Today, in preparation for the frag swap this weekend, we are going to fill these racks with all the coral that I want to sell. Let's go. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. I put out weekly reef-related videos here on this channel, so please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post new videos. In the last video, I walked you through this setup over here. It's a 10 gallon extension of the frag tank. I didn't realize it at the time, but this is actually gonna allow me to prepare for the frag swap from the comfort of my own home. This is the tank that I will be using on Saturday. Now, I wouldn't consider myself a vendor. I would consider myself a hobbyist first. So this is kind of like a twice a year thing that I do. I know that vendors have a great setup, a great workflow for setup, but this, we'll see if it works for me. I've got one rack in the tank right now. I've got to make another one real quick, and each of these will fit inside the coolers that I will take on the day of the frag swap. We talked about this last time during the frag swap series. There's a couple companies that actually make a whole frag system that will allow you to transport whatever you need from place to place in a nice kind of plug and play system with frag racks that fit into coolers and to different Tupperware containers. Building an Obsession comes to mind. They've got whole frag transport systems available on their website. They are pricey, but if you don't have a lot of time to devote to making your own, it might be a way to go. I just made mine, which is essentially the cost of the egg crate and the two coolers that I'll be taking. Today, I'm gonna get a good start at filling up these racks. I'm gonna pull out a bunch of different like single polyps, double polyps when it comes to zoanthids. And then I'm also gonna pull out some other frags that I wanna sell at the frag swap on Saturday. I'm probably gonna offload a decent amount of stuff. I've got a lot of things in here that I just have doubles of, or they're just growing out of control. So I need to get rid of some of that stuff, or at least that's the plan. You never know what people are going to buy the day of. Let's head over to the new tank and we'll start to fill this thing up. Believe it or not, this is about an hour and a half of work, uh, cleaning up some plugs and then sorting stuff out. I don't know if this is going to be the final pricing on everything, but uh, some highlights here. I've got four Walt Disney frags here. There's a couple Apache Chief uh, Acros, really cool. SBB Aphrodites. Just some cool Zoas to choose from in here. I'm gonna fill up this $10 section with a lot of goodies. Got some uh, hammer over there, just affordable. I wanna make everything as affordable as I can. And then I set these pieces over here. These are some Zoas. Uh, I think we got a good start. This is what a basket looks like that was filled with mushrooms. Don't worry, I've replaced it right here with that one. But this is what happens when you let mushrooms just grow all over the basket. You gotta cut it out, so. But it's added uh, quite a nice little bouquet of color here. As you can see, I've got some, uh, some oranges here, this really fire, like orangish reddish one right here. And I've got some green shrooms back here. And this one's really cool. I like this one a lot. Hard to see here. It's like a nuclear sunset. It's got a really cool pattern on it. This is the aftermath of impromptu fragging. <laughs> 2,000 years later. I've got a wide variety of things here from Anacropora over here, Hammer, uh, Frog Spawn, got this really cool uh, Pulsing Sinularia, Blue Suspicularia, a Setosa, got some shrooms here, a bunch of $10 Zoas, bunch of stuff in the $20 section, bunch of stuff in the $30 and $40 se section. I really don't have anything over $50. This is kind of what I did last time and it seemed to work out. So I think what I might do is when I get there, I'll spread this out, maybe see if I have to cut some more stuff. Good. And so begins another frag swap. This is my second frag swap. So I think I have improved a little bit on preparation. So we're about an hour away from load in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start preparing the tank for transport. So uh, I've got some salt water mixing in there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this up and use that water that's in the tank right now and go ahead and turn off the pump and the frag tank will just function as normal. That's the nice thing about this extension is that it's kind of like its own appendage. So 
all I gotta do is cut off the circulation and remove it and we should be good to go. So before I'd have to do a water change and all of that, but I've been preparing for three or four weeks now, so I'm pretty ready to go. We got our coral in the two coolers right here. What's nice is it's two coolers of water and just that much extra to fill the entire tank. So I'm just gonna fill this bucket all the way to the top and then we'll have plenty of water for filling the tank when we get there and then top off water for tomorrow. We are way ahead of schedule here, which is a good thing, uh, I think, <laughs> as long as they let us in so we can get the heater into the tank. Um, and the best part about setting up the night before is that if you miss anything, you can always come back and grab it. The, I say that, and this frag swap is only like 10 minutes from my house. So if you're traveling across the country, maybe a different thing. But uh, for me, 10 minutes and I'm back. So even if I miss something crucial tonight, I could still come back to the house and grab it. So I headed off to the swap. My wife and kids actually took the Jeep for the weekend, and I totally forgot that I had to haul stuff in my wife's car, which is a tiny little Mitsubishi Lancer. I put some plywood down on the front seat to level it out, and the corals traveled in the front seat with me. I'm here. I found a little bit of light here to uh, shine on my face. Uh, they just had a pork chop dinner at the Elks Lodge, so we're gonna wait for them to uh, get out of there and then start unloading stuff. But I'm starting to put my corals inside because it's a little bit warmer. The only thing that I forgot was tweezers. That's it. I couldn't believe it either. I cannot rave enough about the convenience of this setup. It took no time at all to set it up and I got everything ready the night before, which was super nice. It was a little different this year though. It's a lot smaller than uh, it has been in the past. This whole middle section was filled with tables. We have 12 vendors. It's gonna be small, so we'll see who shows up tomorrow so there are advantages for <laughs> for not having a whole lot of vendors but having a lot of people come through uh, people are anxious to buy maybe that will help us out in the long run but uh, I guess three more vendors are coming tomorrow but usually this is kind of like a party atmosphere you know the beers are flowing we're setting up we're talking tanks talking shop but it's a little key this year it's, it's a very it's a very pandemic frag swap. I'll show you the setup real quick. It was nice to see some of the Zoas already opening after just a few minutes of the lights popping on the night before. Now, one of the things people liked from last year was these price tags. It reduces the amount of haggling and you, as the hobbyist, don't have to ask about every single piece. Early the next morning. It is the morning of the frag swap and we could not have asked for a better day. It is gorgeous outside. I think our high was like 76 today. Guys, it's November 7th. <laughs> our high should not be 76. I'm not complaining at all, but hopefully this will get some more people out and about and uh, maybe pull in some people from out of the area, which would be great too. We're gonna get some money. We're gonna get some change at the bank and then we're headed to see how the corals did overnight. Tyler's helping me today. How's it going? <laughs> we got people. Limited capacity. But let's sell some corals. Shout out to Tyler or Inland underscore reef. You may know him because he's been featured on this channel many times with his coastal reef tank. And he came out to help out and wasn't asked to, just came out to lend a hand. He's got a great new tank and I can't wait to show you guys. This thing is awesome. All right, so the swap. There was a rush for about an hour and 30 minutes and then a slow trickle for the rest of the afternoon. The vendors that came had some really awesome stuff. Uh, I think the vendors were just as excited to sell again as people were to come out and buy things. A lot of them had a wide variety of uh, mushrooms and zoanthids and LPS and SPS. I think for me and the other vendors, it was just nice to get out there and be with the community again, if nothing else, sell some coral and have some great conversation. That's a wrap. Didn't do too bad. Sold a bunch of stuff, but we'll, uh, we'll go home and we'll recap everything. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and break down here and then uh, we'll total up everything and see how much we made this year. Another frag swap in the books. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back up, make sure all the corals are safe, and then we'll uh, 
tally this bad boy up and see how much we made. I don't know if it's as much as last year, but it's very, very close. And that's saying a lot during the pandemic. So uh, we'll hit the road and we'll uh, go back home and check everything out. All right, well, it's been a couple days now, so let's go ahead and discuss the results. First of all, I have to say this tank made everything so much easier. Being able to connect and disconnect from the frag tank and just being able to prepare several weeks in advance, making sure that those frags are all lined up, making sure that the pricing is on point, like that made it so much easier. Hang on, you know what? Let me, let me clean all this stuff up. Much better. The only thing that I didn't like about this tank was that there wasn't a spot to put floss that was easy. You know what I mean? When you get like an all-in-one tank with that back filter, you can throw some stuff in there like filter floss or pads, carbon reactor, all that kind of stuff. Other than that, it was awesome and I can always modify it down the road if I want to. All right, let's go through the checklist of everything that I brought. You can also use this as a guide if you were going to do a frag swap, I actually referenced the same checklist from my last video and we'll tally up all the expenses and I'll tell you how much I made. All right, so first up was the tank. Now the tank originally, like I said, was going to be a Rubbermaid container, a Sterilite container, and I just didn't feel super confident in that. Maybe we'll do a build down the road with one of those, but I didn't feel super confident. And so I asked my buddy Derek to see if he had any scrap acrylic laying around and maybe make one. So that was $100, which I felt was a fair price for that. The lights I just took off the frag tank, maybe not advised, but you know, the coral was only without a little bit of light for approximately 24 hours. The reactor was also $0 because I just used that from the frag tank. It wasn't running anything, so I felt comfortable doing that. I actually had to buy some black egg crate because my local fish store ran out. They didn't have any more, and apparently there's a supply issue with it right now, so I had to buy from Bulk Reef Supply. And anybody who's bought egg crate from Bulk Reef Supply knows that it's a little bit expensive. So I spent $20 on a square two by two of egg crate. Frag bags I had from last year. I overbought, so I just used those, zero dollars. The heater I also bought last year and reused this year, also zero dollars. I had an old Jabo wave maker from a previous cube tank that I used for some flow in the tank. That's a PP8, I believe, but I already had that too, so zero dollars. I included stickers on here, but that could be mixed and matched. I mean, some of it was for the frag swap, some of it was for Instagram, but that was $19 on stickermule.com. Posters I reused from last year, that was zero dollars. Tablecloth, actually funny story about this, I upgraded to the $6 tablecloth last year. Uh, because it was waterproof or it had the plastic on top and someone asked me if they just wanted to throw it away last year and I said no save that and so we reused that this year so uh, one less expense. I've used the square reader once before. Square will take their own commissions we'll talk about that later but the actual reader is zero dollars that's so you can take credit card payments. Acrylic pointers so that people can you know, point out what they want and not have to stick their fingers in the tank. That was zero dollars. Had that from last year. Always bring a towel, uh, multiple towels if you can because you're dealing with water and you're bound to spill some. So a uh, towel from the house without my wife knowing, zero dollars. One of the big mistakes I made last year, and I say big, it wasn't really that big, was tubing. I didn't bring any hose to get the water back out of the tank once I got it in, so I had to borrow somebody's this year. I remembered, zero dollars for that. So they actually waived the table fee this year because of the low turnout of vendors. So I was okay with that. You know, it was normally a hundred dollars, but that's a hundred dollars saved at this point, which was super awesome. If you can believe it, I didn't buy any corals at the swap. I know, there was a lot that I saw that I really wanted, but I held off and uh, just focused on the selling aspect. So zero dollars for corals bought. All right, so here's the good stuff. Square sales, so every credit card payment that I took, I made $400 total on all those after fees and expenses. That came out to $382.20. In straight cash, I made $640. So if you take the total, which was $1,022, and subtract the $161 in expenses, I made $861.20 this year. $20 more than last year. And that wouldn't have been the case if I would have had to pay a table fee. I would have made $120 less. 
this year or $80 less, whatever that math ends up being. Given the circumstances and the amount of people that came out, I would say that's a pretty darn good number. And I'm also starting to understand what people want and what they kind of are a little reluctant about. So they want high end at low prices. So the Walt Disney's I had priced at 40 and $50 depending on the size, which I felt was a pretty fair price for those. Uh, Zoas were okay, but they mainly stuck to the $10 and $20 section when it came to Zoas. Any of the higher end Zoas, the $40 or $50 Zoas, were kind of like, eh, maybe not so much. Not a whole lot of high end Zoa collectors in St. Louis, maybe. For now, I'm probably going to use this tank to sell on Facebook or local forums and just keep it up and running as a good place to take pictures. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, other stuff in the photos and that'll allow me to put packs together for people that I can sell on Facebook, which is what I'll use this tank for. I had a quick conversation with Salty Alley from Ocean State Aquatics just before the frag swap, just to kind of get a feel about what they're selling a lot of in the store. And she said they're selling a lot of euphilia and leathers. I was a little light on both of those categories, but she was right. I only had two euphilia left and two leathers left, and they were kind of like, they were kind of off the wall cores. Like I had the suspicularia that people asked if it was Xenia or not. So it was, it was one of those like oddball corals that was for sale. You know, it's a toss up. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to check out OSA's latest YouTube video about shark eggs. You may have seen these hanging in the fish tank at your local fish store and wondered what are those? There's the little sharks in there and they hatch and then you can have a little baby shark in your tank. I've never had a tank big enough for that, but that's definitely something that I wanna do in the future. Oh, and make sure to drop by the socials and tell Scott Crow Puffy. that Remy sent you. If you like this video or have any questions for a newbie frag swapper like myself, make sure to leave those comments down below. I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. Also make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know when I upload new videos. If you look down below and we're still below 10k, it would help even more if you subscribed. I thought this wasn't going to be stressful, but it was still stressful even the second time around. If you've ever run a long distance race like a half marathon or a marathon, you tell yourself, I'm never doing that again after the race is over. And then about two or three months later, you're like, I could probably, I could probably do that again, even though I told myself I shouldn't. It's like that, but, but no running. Will I do it again? Probably. All right, stay safe out there and hope to see you again in the next video.